Hello and welcome to my tutorial about events in WX Widgets. To really understand events, we need to dig a bit deeper in WX Widgets internals and understand how they work. Let's start by comparing the execution of a standard C program with a program that uses WX Widgets. The entry point of your program in C is the main function. The statements in this function are executed one by one, and when the control reaches the return statement, the program exits. You can call other functions, you can use loops, objects, you can build fairly complicated software, but the principle is the same. When your program starts, the main function is started, the statements inside are executed one by one, and when the main function exits, the program finishes. Let's compare that with the program that uses WX Widgets library. Here is a very simple one, just a window with a button. By the way, if you don't understand the directory structure and all these text files on the left, be sure to check my CMake tutorial where I explain how to set up the build system for WX Widgets on all platforms. Now back to the code. As you can see, there is no main function there. We have some setup code inside some framework method where we create the window, and when we run the program it does not exit immediately, it just hangs in there until we close the window. So what's going on? This is still C++ code, so according to the standard the main function must be there. Let's take a look at the implement app macro and see what's inside. We'll have to go through a pretty long chain of macros and functions where one macro is defined in terms of another and so on, but bear with me, we'll get to the interesting stuff pretty soon. So after a few jumps, we got to the main function. It turns out the implement app macro expands in essence to the main function, and that is the entry point of our program. Let's see what's happening inside this main function when wx entry is called. There is something called main loop. Let's explore what's inside. Here is the WX widgets main event loop. Implemented for macOS in this case, the letters CF mean core foundation, which is the native macOS system framework. Just by looking at this class name, you can get the impression that events are central concept of WX Widgets framework. As we can see, the event loop is just an infinite loop that processes various events happening in the app, and that's basically the whole main function. So what are events? They are just objects that are put into the event queue by various controls and can be received in your code. For example, when user clicks a button, the WX button control creates a WX command event, which you can handle in your code and respond by showing some dialogue, running calculations, downloading something from the internet, etc. We say that when you write an application WX widgets, or really any other user interface framework for that matter, you are operating from the event-driven programming paradigm. The framework handles the app lifecycle and user input, and you, as an app developer, are thinking in terms of plugging in your code in response to various user or system-generated events. Let's see how that works in practice. Here we declare our click event handler, which is just a method that will be called when user clicks the button. Next, we declare an event table, which is a static way of creating connection between controls, their events, and our event handlers. There are also more modern dynamic methods for connecting the events, we'll talk briefly about this at the end of this tutorial, but the event table is still the most popular, so let's start with that. 
How do I know what should be the handler signature and the event table macro? If you check the documentation of a control that emits the events you want to handle, there is always a section describing the correct signatures. In this case, for WX button, we see we need our handler to accept a reference to WX command event and return void. We can also see what is the correct macro for connecting click events to our code. So let's respond to the click event action by simply displaying the ID of the sender control. By the way, as you can see, the event table messes up my auto formatter, so I need to turn it off and add some extra semicolon uh, so it doesn't go crazy. This is not really needed if you don't use Clang format, but I do and I find this still very useful. Here is our program with the button and click handler. As you can see, everything works perfectly. We click the button, the event is handled in our code and we display a message on the console. Now let's discuss the IDs of controls and how they relate to events. You might have noticed that I put ID any for my button and also in my event table. When I add another button also with ID any, you notice that the events from both buttons are handled with the same code but the IDs are different. That's because when creating a control with ID any, we are telling the framework to generate the ID for us. So it generates a negative number for an ID, making sure the generated IDs are different for every control using ID any. The meaning of ID any in the event table is a bit different. It tells the framework that we don't care about the sender ID and every event that matches the declared tag should be handled by this function. In real apps, we usually want to distinguish the controls by giving them custom IDs. The usual way is to create the enum for our custom IDs, making the first enum start at last reserved WX with this ID, making sure our IDs do not clash with predefined ones, and letting the following IDs be incremented automatically taking the advantage of the basic enum behavior. Here we still handle the events using id any, so the same handler function is being executed for both click actions, but you can see the sender IDs are now positive and have the values we defined. Naturally, if we change the ID in the event table, we'll now handle only the clicks from that particular control. We can also add more handlers, one for given ID, and the behavior should be as expected. But what if we change one of the entries in the event table to handle all IDs? As you can see, the other handler is completely ignored even though it's connected to the event through the event table. That's because the first handler is executed for any ID and the framework considers the event to be handled or consumed by the first handler so it does not propagate the other handler. We can skip the event in our handler, effectively telling the framework that we reacted to the event, but it should not be treated as a consumed event. In this case, it will be propagated to the next handler in the table, and you can see that clicking the other button triggers both handlers in the order they are listed in the event table. Let's explore this concept of events propagation a bit. For event objects deriving from WX command event, the events get propagated through the parent controls. So if we had a window with a panel and a button inside that panel, we could catch the click event in the button class, in the panel class or in the window class. Let's see an example. Here we declare our custom panel class to be able to add event handler table inside.
We change the color in the constructor so we can easily see the panel and we declare the event table for our custom panel class along with the event handler. We lay out our controls, making sure the panel is a child of the main window and the first button is a child of the panel. We also add some sizers to make it look good. If you don't understand this code, make sure to check out my WX widget size tutorial on my channel. You can see that the first button's click event is handled in the immediate parent control because we declared the event table there. We consume the event so it does not propagate through the chain, but if we add skip, the event will propagate to parent controls and will be handled also by the frame subclass. It's important to understand this works for events deriving from WX command event. For other events, like size change notifications, it does not work. Here we have handlers for WX size event in both classes. We need to call the skip method because we don't want to mess up with the default implementations of these handlers. WX widgets handles the size events internally for doing layouts, so we don't want to consume events before they get to the default handlers. We now add the size event handler to the panel class as well. Even though the panel is a child of the frame, its size events do not get propagated to the frame's event handler. Okay, to finish this tutorial, let's talk briefly about dynamic event handlers. Let's delete the old handlers and tables, leaving just the handler in the frame class. Dynamic event handling is a more modern way of connecting events and handlers that can be done directly in the code without the need of writing messy macros. To do this, we use the bind method, giving it the address of the handler function. It can be any function, function object, or even a lambda expression like in this example. We create the handler function directly in the method that creates the button. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit about events in WX widgets. I'll be talking about events and creating your own events in the future tutorials about custom controls. But for now, that's it. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.